Well, you're not going to get another chance. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, do you, what do you want me to do? Want me to come down the road? Well, this is part of the CETA plan. We, okay. we have um, we've, uh, presented to the, to the council uh, previously uh, our plan, and, and uh, uh, one of the line items in this plan was $36,000 for community corrections for a roof uh, replacement. And uh, Paula has uh, gone out for quotes on um, roof replacement. I, I think she's come up with uh, uh, James Schwartz construction would be uh, the low bidder, and uh, it's for uh, 30 year shingles. <clears throat> and uh, we would just like to ask uh, that the uh, council approve the spending of this money. He did include tax, which he knows he has to remove that on his proposal. Um, and the one thing that James did ask us to consider is that that price could be reduced if we could use our community service workforce to clean up the grounds, which I think is a great um, solution for that. So that price would be reduced even more with the labor um, if we use the community service workforce to clean up all the nails and shingles on the ground. Obviously, we won't put them up on the roof. But. Did, did the other companies get that opportunity to know that? No, he actually, he asked me. I didn't. Yeah, he asked me, and I just said I would bring that to the commissioners and see if they had any concerns about that, which they did not. So, what's no. his total bid, Paula? It would be well. He has twenty-eight thousand forty-one ten, but that's including tax. So we'd have to reduce. I got it. Just a minute. Okay. Twenty-six eight ninety-eight eighty. Twenty-six eight ninety-eight eighty. And then it could be possibly less than that with some help. Yes. Okay. Then what's the other ones then? Then we have okay. Then the other one would be a layover that he submitted, so we're not we're not interested in that. Um, and then uh, we had one from Smith. You said layover. You're talking about putting another foot. Yes. 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 Which is the one we would like to go with. And then we have thirty one six nine zero from Smith. And then Fort Wayne roofing is 35 to 10. Oh, yeah. And this is for 30 a year? Yes. Single? Yes. And I've had a sample in my office for a long time. If you want to look at it. <laughs> but um, the reason um, that I approached the commissioners again with this, I wasn't trying to be um, a thorn in their side about it, but James called me and said that Morsha said the shingles price are going to go up by $8 um, a square. But if we commit to this um, proposal and we do it within 90 days, Morsha's will honor this shingle price. Does that make sense? And this is already in the seed it plan. Yes. Can we get a motion on the floor? Is there a second? Second. A second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. Them opposed, the same. Thank you. Thank you. What's your objection? George, you want to go ahead with the sure. report? Unless you got something else, Paul. May I have five minutes? <laughs> Maybe even less. Uh, the report I gave you, this is a report that I'm required to submit to the Department of Corrections every Tuesday morning. It's just, just a snapshot of the population that we're serving on that day. The, the top portion is the actual numbers. Um, of adult participants were serving by component. And the bottom section would be of that population, uh, those convicted of felony offenses, because that's the population that obviously the Department of Corrections is most concerned with. Um, as you can see, the community service restitution is primarily a misdemeanor program. That's why we no longer receive uh, funding for that. It all has to be supported through user fees, because they don't look at that. The Department of Corrections doesn't look at that as a, d a deterrent from um, prison, because most of the, that population will, will never go to DOC. So um, that's just something, you know, if you would like me to send those to you, I'd be glad to do so. Um, and the only other thing I have is I would like to prepare a 2012 summary, um, just a program and services, but I'd like some direction from you as, about things that you would like to know about community corrections. Uh, the food, um, the meal program at the sheriff is something I definitely want to give you numbers on it went really well. We were below our appropriation. We served more than what we thought we were going to serve in the year and spent under the appropriation. So those will be numbers I submit to you. But is there other things that you would like to know as far as the community corrections program? 
I got a question. There, in the state legislature, there's, I don't know whether you're following this. Okay. There are a bunch of proposals of changing that would be incarcerated people and where and how. Yes. Uh, have you followed that enough to know where it's going to affect your program? Uh, the only thing I do, do know about it is that um, they're looking at they're going to be serving 75% of their sentence, which obviously we would feel would be pushing more people to community corrections. So that's, that's the one area that we're being kept updated on is that if that goes through, obviously that's going to be increase the Department of Correction population, which will also increase community corrections population. Because if they get out earlier, you're going to have to monitor them. <coughs> they're going to go on probation, and it's going to increase all your staff load, right. workload. But if they're required to serve 75% of their sentence in the Department of Corrections, that's definitely going to increase the, the prison population. Okay. So they're going to be moving those lower-level of offenders back wow. into the community. So we're going to have to be prepared to serve them on the local level. I right. could ask Mike from about that, too, because that's going to affect our jail population. Mm -hmm. So we're like five seven. And the lot next to us <laughs> is for sale. It's 1.5 acres, and they want $275,000 for that. That's the other thing I'm supposed to follow up on. Uh, Paula, how's Troy doing? Uh, Troy Center, the day um, daytime program, I believe, yesterday, was it, did I put, they have 20 students, 20, yeah. 20 students enrolled. Um, I did talk to Nikki yesterday. She believes that probably enrollment next year will be 25 mm -hmm. students in the voucher. Um, which is enough to support staff but not operating. So um, she'll be looking to, for grants as far as to assist with the operating costs of that. Uh, we did um, include that program in the community corrections grant application that's being reviewed right now by the state, but we're asking for state money. We know that we could no longer support that through user fees. It was just draining our fund. Um, so Nikki will be going to the grant hearing with me in April. We've asked for $86,000 to help with supporting the operating cost of that program is not for staff, it's for prevention services, which is definitely a deterrent for juveniles as far as the corrections piece. So we're hoping they'll, they'll continue to provide some um, grant money for that. Are the schools still uh, pretty much? Minimal. <laughs> Minimal, yeah. Uh, Smith Green is not uh, using the program at all. WIDCO has been amazing, um, really working in support of the program, and I think their numbers are higher than what they projected. Uh, but. Willie really County Consolidated Referrals are down. Why do you think they don't want to support them? I think it's just a funding issue. I think the schools are, are struggling with funding, and obviously if we're serving them, then they lose money, so. Is, is there any way that you could branch out? And what I mean by branching out, maybe touching with uh, Whitco, or uh, Warsaw and yeah. Is that something that could I, be I definitely think that's something they could look into. Um, right now they're trying to get their nonprofit, um, they're trying to become nonprofit, and that's a process in itself, uh, the Troy Center, Inc. And then I think they're going to have to reach out to their communities. The thing there, the barrier there is going to be transportation, because right now they're transporting their students. So. What about um, any type of homeschool program <coughs> for parents that don't want their kids in public education? It, yeah, they'd definitely be eligible. And that's a lot of the and, population. And maybe that would be a good thing to, to reach out, try to yeah. figure out how to advertise. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of kids just they have to drag them to school every single day, and yeah. if you could get them in a program like that where they could get more one on one, that type of thing. And I agree. I think really for that population, it's a lot of the social skills, and it, you know, it's not such a large school, so they feel, you know, that they they can function better in that learning environment. Maybe if you could focus with Whitco or um, Columbia City or and Carroll and Warsaw and, and talk to the guidance counselors and say you have a student that just doesn't fit. Maybe they haven't been in the system. That doesn't mean they're not close to becoming in the system. Right. Then you could work on an agreement with the parents that would rather pay now and pay for their kids to be educated through Troy than um, lose them to. And you got West Noble sitting right up there. Yeah, straight down to five. And I'll meet with Nikki, Nikki next, next week, so I'll definitely You got everything in place, you might as well use it as a gift it is yeah. and get as many kids in touch as you can. Yeah. I hate to see it not be there, yeah. Anything else for Paul? Anything for me as far as reporting that you'd like to see numbers? Okay, I'll put some together if you don't like it. Don't. <laughs> Okay. okay. All right. Trending, they want graphs. Oh gosh, I'm not good at graphs. I'm calling young girls for that. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, George. Okay, as far as